Hello, Amanda Runia here. I am starting a new thing. This is the first video of what I'm just going to call the silly question corner. Uh, since it seems like there's a theme of people asking questions and usually caveating it with this might be a silly question, or I feel silly asking this because there tends to be this feeling that you should already know something, but if you haven't actually been taught it or had a chance to take the time to learn it, how would you know it? So today's question is what the heck are estimated taxes? I'm pretty sure I need to pay them. How do I go about that? And how do I even have a clue what to pay as a specifically as like a small business owner in those really, you know, possibly that first year, maybe first, second year, maybe first profitable year. Uh, also specifically looking at you're in a position where you need to pay, or you might be required to pay estimated taxes, which means you're not uh, a C corporation. So, cause C corporations are going to pay their own taxes, but S corps, LLCs, any tax entity for your business that ultimately flows through to your personal tax return. And if you're listening to this and you've been following me, chances are you fall into that bucket. So the big thing I want to say here is this is not tax advice for you. And also we are taking like the 50,000 foot view on this topic today to really just help you wrap your brain around why this is a complicated question to answer and kind of just the real big picture fundamentals of how do you even need to start thinking about this or looking at this for your own situation? So just know there are tons of resources for all of the specifics. You can resource, you can Google and look up specifically IRS websites. I've got one pulled up here, um, a whole page on estimated taxes and lots of videos, lots of details, how to calculate. Um, and of course, if you have a tax person, they would be the best person to talk to about this. Because as you'll see, this is extremely personal to your situation. It, it, it's impacted by more than just your business, right? More than just this little bubble of your business. So if you come ask me for advice on how much you should pay in, chances are I'm not gonna be able to give you a number, okay? It's more complicated than that. But here is why it's more complicated, how it's more complicated, and how I try to explain this to my clients when they ask me this so-called silly question. So what I've got in front of us pulled up is a copy of the 2020 version of the 1040 individual tax return form. So I'm using this with super round numbers just to kind of give you an idea of like where all the buckets flow into. Um, backing up even a little bit more, the reason you have to pay estimated taxes is if you are a sole proprietor, if you are owning a small business, you still have to pay into very specifically social security and Medicare. Okay. So if you're a W-2 employee, that automatically gets yanked out of your paycheck. Um, and that's, you know, somewhere around that 7% when you add them together, a little bit over 7%, that automatically gets pulled out of your paycheck that you pay in. And your employer company you work for pays that same percentage based on how much your wages were. So you pitch in a little, they pitch in a little, it comes out to, I believe it's 15.3%. If you were to add together your portion that comes out of your paycheck and the portion that your boss, your company you work for pays in. So out of all your wages, the government is usually getting about 15% to go into the bucket for social security and Medicare to be paid out for people that are applying for that later on in life. But if I have my own small business and I'm receiving money from my clients, nobody's pulling that percentage out. The government's not getting their cut on the front end. So when it comes time for tax season and I file my schedule C, the way the numbers flow through your tax return is when all of that gets caught up and the, the IRS says, okay, you grossed $100,000. You, after all of your business expenses, you netted $40,000. We want that 15% off of that $40,000. So pay it up. And you have to act as both employee and employer. 
in that circumstance because you are, I mean, you're both, you're kind of acting as both as a small business owner. Now they kind of account for that and give you a little bit of grace and give it, give the employer part back in your tax return, but that's getting a little bit nitty gritty. So the big reason that this is complicated is because you cannot just say, I made for, I netted $40,000 on my tax return this year. I'm going to take that by 15%. And that's the amount I'm going to owe on my small business taxes because your personal tax situation affects it all. And you might end up owing less. You might need to make less estimated taxes based on situations going on. So here, let's walk through kind of what I mean by that. I've got a 1040. In this scenario, we've got wages and taxes. Let me try to make this a little bit bigger here. So this is the line everyone's familiar with, wages, salaries from 10 or from your W-2. So say this is my spouse. My spouse made $100,000 on his W-2 this year. And I'm the one with the small business. I knitted 40,000, remember? So that's in another line. If you scroll down here, we've got a Schedule C. We all know we've heard of Schedule C. So all that information and details is going to go on a Schedule C. But that net number ultimately ends up on this page, flows through on the tax software to this line. It's part of Schedule 1. So say I've netted $40,000. Then everyone's going to have, right? You see all these other lines here. We're not going into details on any of this stuff. These are all things that could affect the story and the narrative that we're playing out here. So this is what I'm saying. Whatever else you've got going on on your 1040 is going to affect how much you may or may not want to pay in on your estimated taxes. Because I'm assuming none of this stuff's going on, but maybe you have this stuff going on, all these different details here, right? So say now between the two of us, I've got $140,000 of income. And then you might be familiar with the term standard deduction or itemized deduction. Most people fall into standard deduction, especially with recent tax changes that were made. So we're going to use that number, which I believe for this next year is about $25,000 for a married couple. So automatically that income that we made, that $140,000, the IRS automatically bumps that down using a standard deduction. So now my taxable income is close to $115,000. And again, all of these lines here are going to impact what that taxable income number is but we take that taxable income number and then we're gonna go to the next page on the 1040. There we go. The very beginning of this next page starts off with tax. Now, of course, this tax, comp tax calculation is based on all sorts of tax tables, what tax bracket you fall into. It's very complicated. Tax softwares are gonna spit that out, which is again, a plug for why you should work with a tax accountant for your tax return, because they're gonna be able to tell you what that calculation would be if your taxable income number was a certain dollar amount, okay? Big round numbers here today, folks. So I'm saying off of that about $115,000 of taxable income, we're gonna estimate for the sake of this example, my total tax I owe is $17,000. And I shouldn't even say total tax, it's just tax because we haven't even gotten to adjustments. Then the IRS says, okay, one of the big adjustments we're gonna make here is child tax credit. So for this example, let's pretend you've got a, one kid and they're 10 years old. So normally a child tax credit for 2021 for a 10 year old kid, is going to be $3,000, except they complicated things. And in 2021, you might've been getting $250 a month from July through December. So you already got $1,500. So that's, this form is going to look different because it's going to account for how much did you already get paid out, right? So for the sake of this example, I just plugged in, we're gonna take $1,500 credit out of that $17,000 taxes. And then here is where ultimately they're going to calculate based on that Schedule C that you told us, here is what your self-employment taxes are. And it's not, I mean, there's, there's tax tables involved in there. It's gonna be around that. 15% mark. And if that seems really unfair, which you might be thinking, why should I pay 15% when if I was a W-2, I'd only pay that, you know, seven and a half percent, but they take half of that and they actually put it in part of your adjustments up here. So they kind of 
pull half of that out of that taxable income number. So it's like you kind of get compensated for it. It kind of offsets a little bit. But still, this number is going to show up here what your self-employment tax is. And again, you can probably use round numbers if you're really ballparking it, say 15% off of that net income for your business. So now I've got, I had tax calculated at 17,000. I had some credits that pulled out of there. I owe more tax because of the self-employment tax that's hitting me. This is my total tax that I owe the IRS, $21,000. Now here is the meat and potatoes of what I wanted to show you because a lot of people fall into this scenario as small business owners where maybe one person has a W-2 job and one person is a small business owner, right? Chances are the person with the W-2 job had federal income taxes being withheld. How much did they have withheld? That is based on that little form, the W-4, that they filled out with their employer. W-4s can be updated anytime if you contact your accounting, payroll, HR department, whoever is the right person for your business. Um, so you don't have to do this just annually, but oftentimes people set it up once and then they just call it good to go and they don't touch it ever again. But that's where this number is going to come into play. And that is why I always say, how much should you pay in extra for your estimated taxes? Depends on your personal life stuff and your personal tax return. It's going to depend on do you have 12 kids that all qualify for child tax credit? Well, if you do, you're not going to owe very much taxes at the end of the day. So maybe you didn't need to send any money in for estimated tax payments. If you have no kids and maybe your spouse didn't withhold very much on their W-2, they kind of went the other direction and only withheld a little bit, you might owe a bunch in at the end of the tax year. So that's, these are the, some of those numbers that kind of add into it. What the IRS cares about is like, if I had not made any estimated taxes, $21,000 of my total tax bill with the IRS minus 15,000, which is maybe what my spouse had withheld on their W-2 paycheck, every pay, every pay period, then I would owe, see if I can find the actual right line here. Um, Then I would owe $6,000 if I can find, here we go, the right line. If I had not made any payments, right? I'd tax bill of 21,000 minus 15,000 of payments already made, essentially, withheld from the W-2. I owe $6,000 on my tax bill. Now, the IRS, you, you could just say, that's fine, I'll just pay that in April, right? But the IRS says, well, you're supposed, because you own this small business, right? And you know, you're going to owe $6,000 at the end of the year. We would like that throughout the year. Um, this calculation of if you're going to end up with a penalty from the IRS is complicated. Okay. Uh, it's based on timing and it's also really heavily based on what was your tax bill last year. So there's usually you know, this is where I, I also, especially if it's a first year in business, maybe it's a giant growth year and all of a sudden you had way more than you, you know, way more income than you realized, which is great, but now you owe a lot more. Um, the fact that it's, the calculation is somehow based on last year's tax return too, that comes into play is where it's really helpful to have a tax person to talk to, because some of these little nuances can make a really big difference on if you're going to have to cough up uh, penalties or interest for not paying enough in throughout the year. Um, one thing I really wanted to make clear, right? So maybe you, you estimate you're gonna owe $6,000. You could make $6,000 worth of estimated tax payments throughout the year, right? You could send in $6,000 and we'll get into that next of how to send that in. You could send that in throughout the year on your own for your business. But one thing some people do is they say, I know I'm going to owe about that amount. I'm terrible about making estimated payments. That's a whole other step. I'm just not sure I'm going to be good at doing. You could adjust your spouse's W-2 to withhold more. Um, so this is a scenario that I've seen a lot of people do where they would rather just adjust it on the person's W-2 
so that it's all automatic and you don't have to make any special extra steps on your own. Because then at the end of the day, $21,000 tax bill minus $21,000 worth of payments withholdings throughout the year, you're good to go. You've, you're at zero. The IRS cares more about getting their money throughout the year. They don't care. Did you have nothing withheld? And did you make $21,000 worth of estimated payments? Or did you have $10,000 withheld on a W-2 paycheck and $11,000 worth of payments. They just want their money. It all is going to go essentially in this same pot, especially if you are married filing jointly, it's going to go in the same pot at the end of the day. So that's why it's worth looking at, right? And that's why you can't also use straight up percentages. It's a really good starting point. If you're talking to someone and they're like, I don't even know where to start. It's like, okay, are you on track to net $40,000 this year, then maybe you can just start by thinking you might owe 15% on that. What's 15% on $40,000? Maybe try to come close to making that much in payments in advance. If you overpay, right? If somebody, let's see if I can do it here. If you were to overpay on here, let's do... Yeah, fifteen thousand dollars. So you owe six thousand dollars, but maybe you paid ten thousand dollars because you were a little bit too ambitious. You didn't realize how many deductions you would have, or you were just trying to be uber uber careful, right? Then I believe we're at four thousand dollar overpayment. Then the IRS is going to give you a refund of four thousand dollars. It's the same as if somebody over withheld on their W two and they don't actually owe that much. You get that money back. Ideally, most people want to get as close to zero as they can on their tax return. And there's different opinions about that as well. Talk to a tax person with your specific details of your situation to come up with a tax plan for estimated tax payments. I can't stress that enough, especially if you really aren't sure what you're doing. And even if you're somebody who's like, I'm really gonna do my tax return on my own. I've always done it on my own. I just want some tax planning. You can still pay a CPA, a tax preparer for tax planning advice. You know, oftentimes that's included in a tax preparation agreement, but there are plenty of CPAs that will take a tax planning appointment and charge you just for that appointment, even if you're not planning on using them for the actual tax prep. Um, I still advise a tax person. So maybe now you're at the point where you're saying, okay, pretty sure I need to make some estimated tax payments. I don't wanna deal with adjusting the W-4. I would rather just make estimated tax payments. This is where the IRS website comes into play. So if you just Google IRS estimated taxes, you can't miss this article, this page coming up. They have a section, obviously they cover all of the details in here from the IRS. They have estimators and everything. Oh, let's see, when to pay. So under the when to pay estimated taxes, of course they have it by quarters. They give you a few options. You may send them in the form with the form 1040 ES by mail. Okay, if you're gonna send them by mail, please take a picture or photocopy of the check and make your own records of it. it was exactly this check on this day and I mailed it. And if you're gonna mail it, mail it with some version of like confirmation where the IRS mail person has to confirm we received this piece of mail on this date. You want that confirmation because I have seen it happen where the IRS says, we never got your estimated tax payment. And the client had to turn around and say, yes, you did. Here's the proof. Um, so just kind of cover yourself in that way or don't send it via mail. I wouldn't typically recommend that anyway. Uh, they do have a section here where you can pay online. They've got a portal. You can pay by phone or by your mobile device using IRS to go app. Um, you can visit this irs.com slash payments to view all the different options. So you have electronic versions, electronic options for making that payment. Um, so just know that that is out there and that's available. I think I covered big picture for you, why it is kind of complicated to answer the question, how much should I be paying in in my estimated taxes? And hopefully try to paint this picture of where that money goes, right? That estimated tax money that you paid in kind of goes in the same bucket as any 
federal income tax withheld from your or, or your spouse's W-2. And ultimately those two numbers together or all of these payment numbers that have all gone in the same bucket need to be enough to cover your total tax bill, which is impacted by everything else on your 1040, impacted by all your forms of income, all of the adjustments, your standard deduction, and it's impacted by how many kids you have if you qualify for child tax credit. Everything else on this 1040 impacts that number. So yes, it's complicated. Talk to a professional. If you can provide information about your income, your previous tax return year, how you expect your business to be doing by the end of this year, you can usually get a pretty good tax idea um, by talking to a professional of what to expect and when, if, how you should go about making some of those payments. Hope you enjoyed this silly question corner. This is not a silly question to ask. If you're still confused, do not stop asking questions. Get it figured out. Don't be ashamed. No one knows everything, okay? You're not alone in this. Please trust me, you are not alone in thinking that this is confusing and needing help figuring it out. You've got this. Talk to you later. Bye.